So far, we've seen today how to do the long electron configuration for elements on the periodic table, the shortcut noble gas way. And now we're going to look at how you can write electron configurations for ions. Those are atoms that are not neutral, um, particles that are not neutral, where they either have more electrons than protons or more protons than electrons, cations or anions. So scientists have found that elements tend to be the most stable if their outermost orbital is full. So neon's an example of one of those really stable elements. Its electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, if we're trying to get to neon number 10. Right, that's how that would, that's how that one would end. The outermost orbital, the 2p orbital, is complete with six electrons, right? We've, we've filled up that section on the periodic table by going all the way to the right. Well, wouldn't that be the same for helium, argon, krypton? Helium's electron configuration would just be 1s2. Well, we fill up the s cloud can only hold two electrons in it, and we filled it up when we hit 1s2. Neon would end with 2p6, where we're filling up all those p clouds. Argon would f end with 3p6, krypton 4p6, 5p6. Aren't the noble gases, that far right-hand column, isn't that where the outermost orbital is completely full? And scientists have found that those elements that have full outermost orbitals tend to be very stable. And so there's a silly little uh, cartoon there for you that's neon and uh, some other atom there, I don't know, is uh, handing them a plate full of electrons. That's what that little, if you zoom in there, those are supposed to be electrons. And they're offering them an electron cookie, perhaps, right? And then the neon says, no, thanks, I'm already full. So those elements, our noble gases, are so stable that they don't react with other elements. And that's where they got their name from, the noble gases. They're kind of the royalty of the periodic table. They're the kings and queens of the periodic table. They're so good and perfect. They don't need to react with other things. That's why the whole subject of chemistry exists is because all the elements on the periodic table react with other elements in order to gain electrons or give up electrons so that they can mimic the noble gases, so they can gain that stability of a noble gas. So since the noble gases are already full, they're already complete, they have no need to react with those other elements. So it's very difficult to get helium, neon, argon, krypton, those guys to react with anything at all. It doesn't matter what you put helium, neon, argon, krypton, those guys with. It's like, hey, neon, do you want to react with some copper? Nah. Nitrogen? No. How about some phosphorus? Uh-uh. Zinc? No, thanks. It doesn't matter what you put neon with. It's not going to react because it's already good the way it is. So because they don't react with other elements, that's where they got their nickname from. They're, they're the royalty of the periodic table. But the other elements on the periodic table, the non-noble gas elements that do react, they react with other substances in order to achieve a full outermost orbital as well. It's the whole reason why chemical reactions occur. Those unstable elements are on a mission to become more stable. So when the reaction is complete, the element will become an ion that will have the same number of electrons as a noble gas. So when you look at this silly little cartoon here, 
and uh, it's got neon in the center there, and neon saying you're all just wannabes. Neon has 10 electrons. And when you look at these different ions that are surrounding neon, so if you look to the far left there, you see aluminum, and it has a, the aluminum ion as being plus three. The reason why aluminum is plus three is when you look at where aluminum is on the periodic table, it has 13 electrons. So when aluminum wants to stabilize itself, it has two choices. It looks to its two closest noble gases, neon number 10 and argon number 18. And it says, what could I do to try and stabilize myself? I have 13 electrons right now. So to mimic my closest noble gas, I could either give three electrons away, go from 13 down to 10, and be stable like neon, or I could gain five, go from 13 up to 18 to mimic argon. And the aluminum goes, I think giving away three would be easier. So neutral aluminum turns into aluminum plus three. Well, neutral aluminum had 13 electrons, but after it gives away 10, uh, three electrons to mimic neon, it also has 10 electrons. When you look at magnesium here, the element magnesium is all the way on the left-hand side of the periodic table over here. So magnesium has 12 electrons. For it to mimic a noble gas, it says, well, my two closest noble gases are number 10 neon or number 18 argon. So I could either lose two to go from 12 down to 10, or I could gain six to go from 12 up to 18. So lose two, gain six, eh, losing two is easier. So mag neutral magnesium has 12 electrons, but the ion of magnesium has 10. It mimics neon. Um, if we looked at fluorine, fluorine number nine, its two closest noble gases are helium or neon. So it could either go from nine down to two, give away seven electrons, or go from nine up to 10, gain one electron. Gaining one's probably easier than losing seven, and so it gains one electron and becomes an anion, F minus one. So neutral fluorine has nine electrons, but the ion of fluorine, fluoride, has 10. So that's why the, all those ions are neon wannabes. So let's do the electron configuration next for three different ions. So if we did the ion of nitrogen, so it's called nitride. Nitride, N minus three. Well, nitrogen, the element, has seven electrons. But nitride, the ion, has an additional three electrons, right? Neutral, neutral nitrogen has seven electrons. But the ion form of nitrogen, N minus three, has, uh, has three extra electrons, a total of 10. So if we want to do the electron configuration for the ion form of nitrogen, we need a spot for all 10 electrons. So basically what we're going to do is write the electron configuration for neon. We need 10 electrons. So it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Sodium plus 1. Well, the neutral form of sodium, sodium has 11 electrons. 
but the ion form of sodium, sodium plus one, plus one means that it has given away an electron. It has one less electron than it did before. So it has 10 electrons. So the electron configuration for that ion would be the same electron configuration as neon once again. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So just by looking at an electron configuration alone, if I just said what substance has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that could be neon, but it could also be n minus 3. It could also be Na plus 1. We would need more information to decide which one's which. Let's try one more. What about P minus 3, phosphorus with a minus 3 charge? So phosphorus on the periodic table is number 15. So neutral phosphorus has 15 electrons. When phosphorus becomes an ion, you can see here from its charge, it's going to gain three electrons, have three extra electrons. So it's going to have 18 electrons instead of just 15. So if you have 18 electrons, the noble gas that it is mimicking is like argon, 18 electrons. And so you would write the electron configuration for argon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Or shortcut way, you could say neon, 3s2, 3p6. Unfortunately, you can't just say argon in brackets and that's it. You still have to go back to the closest noble gas before the element and tap.